These little ones are supposed to hold a thousand pounds. I think the sticker's gone off that one. That one's pretty old. So this tank weighs about a thousand pounds, so. I was worried it would crush them, but so far so good. So while we're in here, I had worried about um, there being some kind of oil in here or something that might be flammable. And um, this is just water. There's nothing oil about it. I mean, it evaporates rapidly. It doesn't leave any residue on my finger. So, and the tank is dry. I mean, it's there's a little bit of dust in it. A little bit of rust, but it's dry inside, so. Okay, getting set up here. We're gonna use this Prime Weld CT520D, and well, let's try 45 amps. And we could try something smaller, I think, but this is not thin stuff. This is thicker than quarter. It's 5 sixteenths every bit of 5 16 so I haven't ground off the edges there so there weren't any sharp edges right there and it's every bit of 5 16 so now I stole this idea from a guy on YouTube smoker builder and this is how he runs his <clears throat> plasma cutter for a nice easy edge so sweet um, I just drilled a couple holes in the end of this this is just 1 8 by 1 strap and then we'll just run the plasma cutter along this edge. It'll give us, should give us a nice straight cut. And just kind of tightened it down. I thought, well, I'll bend it. But actually just putting the strap on it with it pretty straight and then tightening the strap just bent it naturally. So it actually worked out pretty well. Okay, so this strap just goes around. The only quirky thing about doing this is if your strap doesn't come straight down and straight around, if your strap like leans out this way, it'll pull these edges out the ends out, which will drive the inner part or the middle part of the strap in. In other words, if this is pulling a little bit that way, it pulls this just even a little bit that way. What it does is it twists it so it bows like this and then it'll bow back out this way. So you just got to kind of make sure it stays straight. I just tighten it down pretty tight and then use a hammer to tap it in place. And that's in good good spot now for the for the plasma cutter. So better, that's 51 amps and 100 PSI. Yeah, 100 PSI. And we're definitely getting... Um, Okay, so we got this side cut and this side cut, and it looks like from the inside we've got good, a good cut. So just use this angle iron here. I started to tack weld it on, but we'll just use a couple of magnets here, and those just kind of overlap that. I'm going to be pushing against it that way though, um, so I put these little magnets on the back here, and I think that's enough. Put a couple clamps here hopefully this will hold it in place and if it does break free and that way it won't fall and smash my foot
Okay, so that's my layout. I'm gonna put the kerf right at the edge of this hinge so the door should lift up around it like that. My original plan was to put the hinge centered like that. Um, and that might work fine too, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put it like that. Um, I'm really resisting my urge to pound this out and break it loose. What I want to do is get these ground and hopefully get them tacked in so that I can uh, then break it loose and then we'll open it. That way I'm not trying to have to clamp it in place and hold it in place. This, that door, that lower part is smaller than this one and that's really heavy. And so this, I'd just rather go ahead and weld, get the hinges welded on, welded on and then we'll proceed. Yes, and I know this is not a safe, this is a big safety issue setting stuff up on a round thing like this. When I'm working down here, I'm gonna move all these tools off here so they don't fall down and clock me in the head. Okay, started to just put a few tacks just in case I needed to cut them off. But then I realized how heavy this was and so I put several tacks on all the way around. And we'll go ahead and loosen the clamps next. And hopefully these will hold. Okay, victory at last. So, just clean up these edges a little bit so they won't be so bindy. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's heavy. Okay, so we're look, looking at the lower door here and what I'm trying to allow for is the upper door as it clamshells against this. I want to have a piece of metal along that part that'll overlap this. So when this upper door closes against this one, it'll overlap it. That way when rain runs down, it'll just run over the top. Um, that's going to come down about an inch right there where that silver mark is. And I left a little bit more right here because I want to put a deadbolt somewhere right here or actually on the tank itself that'll flip over, that'll slide over and keep this from falling out. Okay, so that's why that's a little bit of a gap there. This is not a uh, full length and I kind of wish it was, but this is what I have. I don't have much of this one eighth by one laying around. So we're just gonna go ahead and, I just packed it right here and we'll go ahead and bend it over clamp it here. Now, this is not precision. I'm not measuring this. It's close to half. It actually sticks out a little bit further over here. And here, I need to tap it out just a little bit. Just so it's a little bit past half right there. Matches that. Okay. I am not too interested in making this much heavier. I could use wider stuff, I could use thicker stuff here. Not my priority, not at all my priority. So, okay. So that should hold it, there's no gap there. Good. So these lower clamshell doors where this door sits is actually on the sort of on the underside of the tank. So water's gonna run down it, but I don't think it's gonna run inside. I'm just gonna stitch this in. This is really just so when you close the door, it stops. Uh, it doesn't fall inside. Okay, so that's really all this is, is a stop. On the upper part, I probably will weld this in, just put a nice thin bead along the edge. 
because that's where rain's going to be running down. And of course it'll run down here, but it shouldn't run inside the tank because this is this door is going to be around the bottom. If that makes sense. should do then this will be enough to throw back a trash in easy I'm thinking the grates gonna be about right here and go across making a little headway this morning so this is 1 8 by 1 right here this was 3 16 or quarter I can't remember now and it was just tall enough that when uh, it was just tall enough for this bolt to slide over so so i put two pieces right there i could have trimmed them down and made them look better probably should have done that but i have to put a little bit of inward pressure on it to, to get it to release or to get the bolt to come back but that's okay it kind of helps it fit a little snugger that's good yeah um, we'll drop that here in just a minute and then this edge of course just did a little handle i was going to like bend this and try to and yeah i just cut it and welded it so welded it around there and then just kind of stitch welded it along here just to keep water from running in behind this and getting this rusty i'm going to coat this whole thing with phosphoric acid i'm probably not going to paint it and just that way yeah that way the paint will probably burn off anyway um from what i've uh, from what i understand the paint will probably burn off maybe it depends on the kind of paint i use but let's open this up and see Next, we'll get these welded on. Now, I have noticed that some people that do barbecue grills will weld this part right here inside here, like this. And um, and that does work. I opted to go ahead and do it like this. My worry was that as I welded the top of this right here, that this would spread out when it shrunk, but I just kept clamps on it and it seemed to do fine. I don't really want to weld anything right inside there. I guess I could put a few tacks in there just to keep it from bending out. If I did drop the door like really hard sometime. Um, Cause there is a little bit of a gap there. I guess I could get away with that there. Let's see over here. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap, maybe an eighth. So I might put a few tacks on the inside just to keep this from flexing out as the slams close. Of course, this is gonna have another strip right here that's gonna help make it strong as well, so. So. I mean, it's okay. What I didn't anticipate though, was that this 5 16ths would warp and that surprised me and so I was talking a few minutes ago why people might weld a strip in here rather than out here on the door itself and I think this might be why because as this all cooled and I like stitched it stitched it stitched it stitched it went back and forth I didn't like burn it all in all at once uh, look at the gap there. 
so and I can kind of push it in you know so it's not like it's a piece of metal or anything hanging there uh, it's still gonna do the job it's gonna keep the rain out and it's gonna um, keep uh, sparks and stuff from coming out so this sides a uh, little bit better but still has that same warp and so that surprised me that that happened I mean it shouldn't have surprised me because that's what happens when you weld something and it shrinks it pulls everything so as I welded this and it shrunk it curved the door like that so oops there's my hand so as I welded it here and it sh cooled um, it shrunk the door like that and so that's why this end came out okay so but I think this will do a better job of keeping rain out than welding a piece inside um, anyway okay it'll still work though